What are Indus seals? Indus seals are small, flat squares carved from stone. Each with an impression carved onto one side, and a knob protruding from the other. Most Indus seals depict naturalistic animals and an as yet untranslated script. The one-horned cow is a common animal featured on Indus seals, sometimes portrayed next to an altar. Other animals include the elephant, rhinoceros, and tiger. Due to the fact that the language remains a mystery, the exact function of these seals is still unknown. Those scholars think they were used to stamp clay as a method of keeping business and trade records. What is Rubensque? Rubens had a very particular way of depicting figures in his paintings. His works are filled with strong, voluptuous, and attractive people. His style is so consistent, that these Rubensque figures serve as a relatively quick and easy way to identify a Rubens painting. In his mythological painting, Venus and Adonis, c. 1635, Rubens depicts the ancient goddess of love just as her lover, Paris. Must leave. Along with her cherubic son Cupid, Venus clings to Adonis. Her long, red hair flows around her face and her supple. Fingers press into Adonis' muscular arms as she pleads with him. Nude, her body is fleshy and white quite different from the thin. Elongated forms popular during previous centuries of Northern European art. The term Rubinesque is therefore used to describe any similarly depicted figure in the work of other artists who have been inspired by the Flemish master. What is a skeletal construction? In some forms of architecture, walls do a lot of the work of supporting the overall weight of a structure. In skeletal construction, a thin interior frame, rather than walls, supports weight, allowing for additional windows and much thinner walls. Both Gothic cathedrals and massive steel-framed skyscrapers rely on this type of construction to reach dizzying heights and incorporate large windows. What is Yukiyoi painting? In Japanese, Ukiyoi literally means, pictures of the floating world. This Buddhist phrase is used to describe a style of Japanese woodblock prints and paintings that developed during the Edo period, 1603 to 1868, and continued on through the 20th century. Woodblock prints from the Edo period were a major influence on Impressionist painters in France and were notable for their use of color the importance of landscape and the focus on bourgeois life through images of dancing, theaters, geishas, and urban street scenes. 
Ukiyo-e woodblock prints are delicately colored with natural dyes and feature thinly outlined forms. They were affordable and extremely popular during the 18th and 19th centuries and were sold by shopkeepers and street vendors in big cities such as Tokyo, known as Edo during the 18th century. Three separate artists usually made woodblock prints, a painter, a carver, and a printer. The painter would first paint the original image. Then, a block of wood, often made of cherry, was carved with the outline of the image to be printed. Covered in black ink, and then pressed to fine paper. A separate block was carved for each additional color used. This meant that multiple blocks were required for a single print. Sometimes as many as 20 separate blocks. Ukiyo-e woodblock prints depicted the secular, material world. Though artists subtly emphasized the Buddhist concept of the transient nature of physical existence. Who was Theo Van Gogh? Theo, 1857 to 1891, was the younger brother of Vincent Van Gogh, who supported his brother both financially and emotionally. Theo introduced Vincent to the Impressionists working in Paris at the time and the two wrote regular letters to each other during their lifetimes. Besides his support of his brother, Theo van Gogh was also an important art dealer. First working in Brussels and later in Paris. Where he bought and exhibited paintings by Impressionist artists such as Claude Monet and Camille Pissarro. He also helped to sell the work of Paul Gauguin, who was also a friend of Vincent's. Although Theo tried to sell his brother's work in Paris, he did not meet much success. He died six months after Vincent at the age of 33. What is the steel of Hammurabi? Hammurabi was a Babylonian king who ruled over the lands of Mesopotamia during the second millennium B. C. He is famous for his code of laws, the earliest known legal code. The code itself is carved into a seven-foot steel, a large slab of black diorite. And in it Hammurabi declares that his code will cause justice to prevail in the land and to destroy the wicked and the evil. That the strong might not oppress the weak nor the weak the strong, as quoted in Stockstad 38. At the top of the steel, above the written code is a carving that depicts Hammurabi himself standing before the sun god Shamash. Shamash, who was also the Babylonian god of justice, is seated in his throne and is surrounded by symbols of power. He rests his feet on a mountain top, wears a long, elaborate robe, and offers a rod and rope circle in his hands. Hammurabi's arms are crossed respectfully in front of him. And he receives the laws as given to him by Shamash. The steel serves as a powerful marker of Hammurabi's high status and represents the divine inspiration of his code.
What is the Renaissance? The word Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth. The Renaissance is generally considered to be a rebirth of classical, Greco-Roman, culture. Which resurfaced after the dark days following the fall of the Roman Empire in the 4th century. This, however, is an oversimplification. Changes such as the development of cities, a growing European economy, and strong support for the arts by wealthy patrons all contributed to the birth of the Renaissance. The balanced, harmonious, and naturalistic paintings associated with the Renaissance did not burst onto the art and culture scene of Europe overnight. It happened slowly over the course of the 14th and 15th centuries. Beginning in Florence, Italy, and was at least partly inspired by a newfound interest in translating classical Greek manuscripts, and the study of Roman ruins. Who were the literati? The literati, or Wenren in Chinese, were highly educated. Scholar painters often held in higher regard than the imperial court painters of the time because of their free-thinking intellectuality and because they did not rely on their art to make a living. Emerging during the Song dynasty, the literati are known for their relatively austere black ink paintings. Created using a painting technique called Shi Emo. They were also highly skilled calligraphers and poets. What is a basilica plan church slash synagogue? While early Jewish and Christian synagogues and churches started out in private homes. Over time a need for larger spaces for worship resulted in buildings constructed for specific use. The Roman basilica structure was particularly inspirational to early Jews and Christians. As they were designed to accommodate large public gatherings, albeit for civic functions. The Basilica Plan churches featured a central nave flanked by two narrower aisles on each side. Separate by rows of columns. At one end of the nave was a semicircular apse, usually facing the direction of Jerusalem. Basilica Plan synagogues usually had space for the Torah in the apse. During the 3rd century CE, Emperor Constantine began a large-scale building program in Rome during which the original St. Peter's Basilica was constructed over the believed site of St. Peter's burial. It is now referred to as Old St. Peter's Basilica because it was destroyed to make way for new St. Peter's Basilica, a building that stands to this day. Old St. Peter's Basilica was so popular during its time that it served to popularize the Basilica plan style of church building for centuries. Who was Sophonis Ba Anguissala? It is true that most professional artists in Europe at this time were men. 
it was not easy for women to be accepted by patrons and male-dominated guilds. There were women artists, however, and the women who painted professionally were usually part of artist families. Such as Katerina van Hemessen and the Baroque painter Artemisia Gentileschi, the Cremonese painter. Sophonisba Anguissola, c. 1532-1625, was different. She was the oldest of seven children in a noble family. Whose father was a classical enthusiast interested in giving a humanist education to all of his children. He recognized Sophonisba's natural talent and sent her to train under a respected local painter. Bernardino Campi. She gained esteem for her portraits. Including a number of engaging self-portraits, as well as paintings of the Virgin Mary. She was asked by King Philip II of Spain to serve as a lady-in-waiting to his third wife. Isabel de Valois, an extremely high honor written about by Giorgio Vasari. There. She painted portraits of the Queen and experimented with mirrors in her self-portraits. In 1552 she painted a miniature portrait, a popular way of depicting friends and loved ones. In which she depicted herself holding a large medallion. Her name encircles the edge of the medallion while an interlaced monogram made up of her sister's names is in the center. The miniature is now at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. What is the difference between Art Nouveau and Art Deco? Art Nouveau and Art Deco were both design movements that flourished in the early 20th century. Art Nouveau was established before Art Deco, and even influenced it. Art Nouveau designs tend to be busier and more ornate, with curving, organic lines. Art Nouveau artists include Alphonse Mucha and Theophile Alexander Steinlin. The designer of the still popular Tourney du Chat Noir posters. Art Deco is also ornamental, however. It tends to be more geometric due to the influence of Cubism and Futurism. Art Deco was popular during the Great Depression, the Empire State Building. Completed in 1931, is an example of Art Deco architecture as are many of the jewelry designs of Georges Fouquet and many poster designs of the era. What is a book of ours? A Book of Hours is a private prayer book, which became popular in the 13th and 14th centuries as literacy levels among the European nobility increased. The books included specific prayers to be recited at certain times or hours of the day and night, and were often devoted to the Virgin Mary. A book of hours was a valuable object, and owning one was a sign of wealth. One of the most masterfully decorated books of hours from the 14th century is the Hours of Jean d'Avreuse. What is Neolithic art?
The Neolithic period is the New Stone Age, which lasted from approximately 6000 BCE until 2000 BCE, unlike their Paleolithic predecessors. Neolithic people were settled rather than migratory, domesticating plants and animals for the first time. The earliest evidence of Neolithic culture has been found in the Near East, including the modern-day countries of Jordan, Syria, and Turkey. Examples of Neolithic art include clay pottery and monumental stone monuments. What are important symbols in Jewish iconography? Though idols are forbidden in the Jewish tradition, some images are frequently repeated. Especially in the decoration of synagogues and the Jewish holy book, the Torah. Scenes from Jewish history including the story of Moses. Were common choices for synagogues, and can be seen in the decoration of Dura Europo. Important Jewish symbols include the following, Menorah Sacred. Seven-branched candelabrum shofar a ram's horn used like a trumpet during ceremonies atrog citrus fruit used to celebrate Sukkot. A harvest festival lulav a palm branch also associated with Sukkot in a 6th century synagogue located in ancient Manois. In modern day Israel, the floors are decorated with Roman style mosaics. Which feature the traditional Jewish symbols mentioned above, along with stylized birds, plants. And animals which are thought to represent Earth's bounty and the unity of the Jewish people. What is the Carney Cloak? The Carney Cloak is a Hawaiian feathered cape that was given as a gift to King George III of England by Hawaiian King Kamehameha around 1843. The red and yellow cape was made of coconut fiber to which feathers were attached. Worn like a cloak, the garment is known as a ahuula, red cloak, due to its color. In Hawaii, red is symbolic of royalty and feathers were used to decorate luxury. High status items such as clothing, blankets, and lays, traditional Hawaiian garlands. The status of the Karni cloak is tied to the status of the Hawaiian king. And is therefore an appropriate and significant gift for another ruler. What is the Lion Man of Hollenstein Stadel? Most Paleolithic sculpture depicts women, not men, but an exception to this is the Lion Man. Carved from mammoth ivory and dating from approximately 30,000 B. CE discovered in modern-day Germany. The Lion Man sculpture depicts a blend of feline and human characteristics. Some scholars believe the Lion Man is actually a Lion Woman. And some other examples of similar female sculpture have been discovered. This sculpture is almost a foot high much bigger than the comparatively stumpy Venus of Willendorf and demonstrates the high quality carving skills and creativity possessed by prehistoric people.
the significance of the Lion Man sculpture is not known. It is possible the piece depicts a human figure wearing a lion mask. But it is also possible that the work depicts a human animal hybrid of spiritual significance. What is the Great Mosque at Cordoba? During the 8th century, the Umayyad Caliphate reached as far east as India. And as far west as Spain and Portugal, a region known in Arabic as Al-Andalus. The city of Cordoba was the capital of Al-Andalus. And was home to one of the most impressive examples of mosque architecture in the Islamic world. The Great Mosque of Cordoba was one of the largest mosques ever built. It has no central altar or shrine, but features a prayer hall that reaches over 250,000 square feet. Besides its large size, the Great Mosque's prayer hall is notable for its use of hypo style. Creating the effect of a forest of columns that supports double rows. Of horseshoe shaped arches made up of red and white bricks, called voussoirs. As a result, the Great Mosque's hypo style hall feels immensely large. Artists and architects continued to work on the Great Mosque for over 200 years after its initial construction. Adding geometric marble carvings, grand mosaics, public fountains, and gardens. After Spain was conquered by Christians in the 15th century. The Great Mosque was converted into a cathedral. Who was Guyam Bologna? Guy Ambaligna, 1529-1608, was an extremely successful late Mannerist sculptor who was known by many names, including Jean de Boulogne and Giovanni de Bologna. Though he was born in Flanders in northern Europe, he worked in Florence, where he received support from the Medici family and other Flemish patrons living in the Italian city. Much of his work was done in marble and bronze, his work often features energetic figures. Engaged in dramatic physical activity, as well as graceful, elongated female figures. He was a master at creating complex poses with multiple figures. Including the rape of the Sabina and the fountain of Neptune. His most famous sculpture is probably Mercury, c. 1565, which represents the Roman messenger god, Hermes, in Greek. Balancing delicately on a small puff of wind, blown by the god, Zephyr. Winged Mercury reaches one hand to the sky with a long finger pointing vertically. With one leg bent back, almost like a dancer. The sculpture was a gift from Cosimo de' Medici to Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II. What is the High Renaissance? The High Renaissance is a name given to the late 15th and early 16th centuries during 
which time great masters such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael were active. Along with slightly later northern Italian artists such as Titian, Correggio, and Giorgian. The High Renaissance is widely considered one of the greatest periods in the history of art. And is certainly the most famous period of Italian art. The High Renaissance is not only an Italian phenomenon great masters from. Northern Europe include Albrecht Dürer and Hans Holbein, among others. Besides art, great scientific discoveries were also made during the High Renaissance. Including the revolutionary work of Galileo and Johannes Kepler. The High Renaissance was a unique and important period of intellectual, technological, and artistic achievement in European history. Is graffiti considered art? From a postmodern perspective, Graffiti is as legitimate a form of visual expression as any form of fine art. Therefore an oil painting is no more valid than graffiti and both are considered art. Graffiti, which is often associated with vandalism and the illicit painting or marking of public spaces, has been part of painting for decades, if not longer. Artists such as Jackson Pollock and Jean Dubuffet, for example, incorporated graffiti-like markings into their work. In 1983, the first exhibition of graffiti art was held at Boymans van Buningen. Museum in Denmark a sign that graffiti was being accepted as a fine art. The artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, 1960-1988, began his career in the late 1970s as a graffiti artist. Tagging buildings with short, poetic phrases, along with this friend, Al Diaz. The duo signed their work as Samo, same old shit. In the 1980s, Basquiat developed a neo-expressionist style that incorporated graffiti elements. Explored experimental music, and exhibited his work in galleries in New York City and Los Angeles. Another artist, Keith Haring, 1958-1990, also began his career by using chalk and magic. Markers to draw his dynamic cartoon images in public spaces, such as New York metro stations. Both Bosquiat and Herring have achieved even greater success since their premature deaths. Bosquiat of a heroin overdose and Herring of AIDS. As graffiti art and street art have received increasing mainstream attention. What is a formal analysis? A formal analysis is a method of understanding a work of art by studying a work's formal qualities. Including shape, color, line space, and texture. A formal analysis should include as much detail as possible with the goal of Understanding how a particular work of art visually communicates ideas to a viewer What did ancient Chinese architecture look like?
while no ancient Chinese buildings remain standing today, houses and palaces from the Han Dynasty, 206 B. C.E-220 CE, survive in ceramic models. They were made for Han tombs and give. Scholars an idea of what the architecture of the time would have looked like. Han buildings were made of wood and were notable for their curved roofs and jutting eaves. The weight of Han buildings were supported by a system of vertical and horizontal beams. Which meant that the walls did not need to bear any of the structure's weight. Colorfully painted screens, usually red and black, were used to separate rooms. The rest of the wood structure was either painted or lacquered, which helped to protect it from the elements. What is the difference between subtractive and additive sculpture? Carving is an example of subtractive sculpture because material is removed in order to create an image. Michelangelo believed, for example, that within each block of stone he worked on, there was a figure inside waiting to be revealed. By contrast, the additive process involves building up a form by adding material. Casting and assemblage are examples of the additive process. What is the dinner party? The dinner party, which first exhibited in 1979 and toured internationally. Is a masterpiece of feminist art by artist Judy Chicago. The dinner party is a large work in the shape of an equilateral triangle, a symbol of femininity. Each length of the triangle is 48 feet long and each is set with 13 dinner settings. Mirroring the number of place settings at the Last Supper. The 39 total place settings, which were individually designed. Honor 39 important women from history from Egyptian Queen Hatshepsut to Virginia Woolf to Georgia O'Keeffe. A long, embroidered runner was made collaboratively by 100 women, under the direction of Chicago. And the triangle-shaped heritage floor, made of ceramic, includes the names of 999 women. The dinner party highlights the often forgotten role of women in history and celebrates women's creativity and artistic traditions. The piece is not without controversy, however. Some have criticized the work for its narrow scope, saying it communicates a predominantly white heterosexual experience, among other things. Regardless, the dinner party makes a powerful feminist statement and is perhaps Judy Chicago's best-known work. What is pop art? Pop art began in the 1950s in Britain, the term itself was invented by English art critic Lawrence Alloway. And became one of the most influential art movements of the mid-20th century. Particularly in Britain and the United States. Pop artists challenged the status of fine art by relying on mass media images. 
such as those from advertisements and popular culture, to create artworks. Key pop artists include Alan Jones, 1937, Eduardo Bolazzi, 1924-2005, Peter Blake, 1930, and Richard Hamilton, 1922-2011, all of whom worked primarily in the UK. American pop artists include Roy Lichtenstein, 1923-2007, Robert Rauschenberg, 1925-2008, Jasper Johns, 1930, and most notably, Andy Warhol, 1928-1987. Early pop art shows were held in London and New York City. Including the This Is Tomorrow show at the Whitechapel Art Gallery and a number of shows at New York's Sydney Janus Gallery. Critics were mixed in their reviews. With many critics shocked at the use of low art to create works of fine art. For example, Robert Rauschenberg, who studied painting under Bauhaus artist Joseph Albers, created a series of works incorporating the Coca Cola logo and Roy. Lichtenstein's large paintings mimic the look and style of comic book art. Pop art questioned the difference between good and bad taste. And broadened the scope of possible fine art subject matter to include everyday objects and culture. What is performance art? Performance art combines theater, music, video, and visual arts and often features artists actively participating in their own work. Though performance based ritual art has existed for thousands of years around the world, contemporary performance art developed as part of the early 20th century futurist and surrealist movements. Notable performance artists include Joseph Buies and Bruce Nauman. For more information about contemporary performance art, see the chapter on Contemporary Art 1960s to present. What is body art? In body art, the artist's body becomes the medium. Body art overlaps with many other forms and styles, such as performance art. It became popular during the 1960s, likely as a reaction against the cold austerity of minimalism. Examples of body art include Bruce Naumann's photograph, self-portrait as a fountain, 1966 to 1967 in which the artist's body takes on the characteristics of a fountain as water squirts from his mouth an example of conceptual body art is piero manzoni's living sculpture 1961 in which the artist signed the bodies of living women How did photography influence Impressionist painting? With the development of photography. 19th century painters were challenged with setting themselves apart from the new medium. Realists had tasked themselves with accurately representing the visual world. 
but now a photographer could do this with the flash of a bulb. What are the colossal heads of the Almec? Often considered to be the mother culture of Mesoamerica, the Almecs flourished between 1200 to 600 B. CE in present day Mexico. The Almec society left behind no written language. But their monumental art indicates that the culture was highly stratified, with clearly defined social classes. The colossal heads found at San Lorenzo in Veracruz are one of the most recognizable monumental art forms in the Americas. Made of basalt, the colossal heads weigh between 5 and 20 tons each. Up to 8 feet tall, the heavy featured sculptures have broad noses and thick lips. The heads wear helmets with ear flaps and straps under the chin. Scholars believe they represent rulers or historic figures important to the Almec culture. What is the Sutton Hu ship? The Sutton Hu ship is an Anglo-Saxon burial ship. Discovered off the coast of England in 1939. The ship likely belonged to King Raedwald who died in 625. And was purposefully sunk as a funerary memorial to an important person. No body was ever found aboard the Sutton Hu ship, however. So it is possible the ship served as a monument to someone who was buried in another location. The ship was over 90 feet long and filled with early medieval treasure. Such as gold coins, armor, and jewel encrusted accessories. The objects found with the Sutton Hu ship represent some of the most valuable examples of medieval Anglo-Saxon art. Did samurai culture influence Japanese art? As samurai culture grew stronger during the Kamakura period, 1185 to 1392. It did indeed have an influence on the arts, including sculpture and painting. One of the most powerful hand scroll paintings from the 13th century is Night Attack on the Sanjo Palace, which depicts swirling flames in deep orange hues as armored. Warriors on horseback attack one another in a battle between the Minamoto and Tara clans. The surprise attack was a significant historical event in Japan's military history. And though the hand scroll was painted nearly 100 years after the battle took place, it serves as a historical record of the period. What is the Gross Clinic? The Gross Clinic is an 1875 realist painting by the American painter Thomas Aikens and depicts Dr. Samuel David Gross performing leg surgery in front of medical students. The choice of subject matter was shocking to the traditional art critics and the painting was 
rejected by the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition in 1876. The painting is notable for its use of chiaroscuro. A sharp contrast of dark and light that is reminiscent of Baroque painting. Powerful beams of light highlight both Dr. Gross's forehead and bloody, scalpel-wielding hand, emphasizing his intelligence and dexterity. The patient's leg has been cut open, revealing the muscle underneath the skin. Causing the patient's mother, also among the audience, to recoil and hide her face. The Gross Clinic highlights Aikens's dedication to realism and is an important example of 19th century American painting. What is distigial? The violence and destruction of World War I shocked the world and groups of artists responded in various ways. For Dutch painter and architect Theo van Dusburg, 1884-1931, and Dutch painters Piet Mondrian, 1872-1944, and Bart van der Leck, 1876-1958. The goal was to create art that promoted universal peace and harmony, both visually and politically. They named their movement the Stijl, which literally means the style. The Stijl is characterized by flat colors and simplified. Rectilinear forms a result of the group's need for visual clarity and mathematical simplification. Distigil is considered to be reductive because visual complexity has been distilled or reduced to only the most pure, meaningful elements. For example, distigil artists preferred primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, or neutral colors such as black, white, and gray. The term distigil can be used to describe painting, furniture design, and architecture. Works include Jared Riotveld's Red Blue Chair, 1923. The Schroeder House in the Netherlands, and the paintings of Piet Mondrian. What is pointillism? Pointillism is the name of a style most associated with the work of Georges Seurat, 1859-1891, who was interested in color theory and experimented with complementary colors. Seurat studied classical color theory and the theories of 19th century chemist Michel Eugene Chevreul. In The Laws of Contrast Color, 1824, Chevreul explained that two adjacent colors would reflect each other's complementary color, the color on the opposite side of the color wheel. In his visual experiments, Seurat placed dots of pure color side by side in his paintings. With the idea that the viewer's eye would blend the colors together, according to the theory. Seurat called this technique divisionism. But art critics used the term pointillism, which is now more common. Seurat's most famous Pointeist painting is a Sunday. Afternoon on the island of La Grande Jot, 1884-1886. This very large painting, 
over 10 feet long, is made up of thousands of distinct painted dots and depicts a relaxing leisure scene. Bourgeois Parisians relax along a riverbank. Well-dressed men, women, and children mill about on the grass. Some holding umbrellas, while others recline in the shade. The monumental scene has a rather formal style due to the pointiest technique. And the individual dots are quite clear when closely inspected. A number of artists, including Vincent van Gogh, experimented with pointillism and other pointillist works include Maximilian Luce's Morning, Interior, 1890, and Family in the Orchard. 1890, by Theo van Rysselberg, who went through a pointillist phase. Three Apples, 1878-79. Art courtesy the Barnes Foundation. Marion, Pennsylvania, USA slash the Bridgman Art Library. Who was Jocko? Jocko was one of Japan's most innovative sculptors. Known for developing a process called joint wood construction. The joint wood method involved designing a sculpture in sections. Each carved from a separate block of wood. These blocks were hollowed and then assembled. This process allowed for larger, lighter sculptures that were less likely to warp and crack. During the Heian period, Jocko created a joint wood rego sculpture of the Amida Buddha. That evokes the rich complexity of Western paradise and is housed at the heart of Biodo Inn. Who is Barbara Kruger? Barbara Kruger, 1945 is an American conceptual artist and graphic designer known for her photographic collages. As a student in New York City, she was taught by famed photographers Diane Arbus and Marvin Israel. And she later became a graphic designer at Harper's Bazaar and then chief designer at Mademoiselle. Kruger's work uses the power of mass media and advertisement to make her text and image pieces. Which usually feature black and white images with bold, white on red text. Manipulating the power of slogans. Kruger's work broadcasts such messages as I shop therefore I am and we don't need another hero. Her work also questions the traditionally passive role of women in art with her famous piece. Your gaze hits the side of my face, 1981, which depicts the profile view of a female sculpture along with the text. Kruger often uses personal pronouns such as I, you, and me so as to avoid gender associations and make her statements universal. Her later work often uses appropriated images and more recently, she has begun creating installations. Kruger's style has been described as agitprop, a blend of the words agitation and propaganda. And 250 her work focuses on themes of feminism, consumerism, and identity.
What is a Rego image? A Rego was a type of image that warmly depicted the Amida Buddha welcoming dying souls to paradise. The descent of the Amida Trinity is a Rego triptych from the Kamakura period in which the illuminated forms of the Amida Buddha and two Bodhisattvas appear to hover against a dark background. The radiant figures were done with gold paint and gold leaf. Creating a contrast with the otherwise subdued silk surface of the triptych. The image emphasizes comfort and peace in the face of death. What is the current? Like Christianity and Judaism, Islam is considered a religion of the book because at its heart lies the Quran, Islam's holy text. It contains the revelations of the Prophet Muhammad as received from God through the angel Gabriel in 7th century Saudi Arabia. The Quran is made up of 114 chapters, called surahs, and 6,000 ayat, or verses. The holy book explains the five pillars of Islam, which are five duties required by all Muslims, and serve as the foundation of the Islamic faith. Written in Arabic, the Quran could not be translated until recently. And Qur'ans throughout art history are known for their high-quality Arabic calligraphy and mesmerizing visual design. Who was Saul Solar? Sol Solar was the pseudonym of Argentinian avant-garde. Artist Oscar Augustin Alejandro Schultz Solari, 1887-1963. In Latin, the word for light is lux, the reverse of which became his name. Much of Sol Solar's work is either unknown or unseen by the public as he worked. On small watercolor paintings that were rarely exhibited during his lifetime. His work is indebted to European modernism, and Solar was particularly influenced by Paul Klee. But it is also infused with the artist's personal interest in mysticism and indigenous culture. Paintings such as Hayfot, Patronus, 1923 are brightly colored and incorporate figurative imagery with abstract form and symbols, such as numbers and the Jewish Star of David. Sol Solar's work, which also included sculpture and writing, is an example of the ways in which Latin American artists took European modernism and made it their own. What is a Lamasu? A Lamasu is a monumental stone sculpture famously part of a Syrian palace decoration and serves as a protector of the palace gateway. A Lamasu combines human and animal features and includes a lion or bull body wings, a human head with full beard and eyebrows, and a total of five legs. When approached from the side the Lamasu appears to be walking. And from the front, it seems to be standing firmly at attention. 
the Lamasu from the fortress of Sargon in the Assyrian city of Karasabad was constructed around 720 BCE and stands over 14 feet tall. Part sculpture and part architectural feature This giant creature keeps a watchful eye on any approaching palace visitor. How did the art of Spain influence art in the New World? Starting in the 16th century, Spanish culture began to dominate Central and South America as Spanish conquerors destroyed native temples and missionaries. Work to convert native populations to Catholicism, sometimes forcefully. By the 18th century, Catholicism in Latin America had become infused with native beliefs, which directly inspired new styles of art and architecture. An example of this fusion can be seen in the nearly 12 foot tall atrial cross from the Basilica of Guadalupe in Mexico City, which was made sometime before the 1560s. This large, stone crucifix was hung in the church's atrium and was decorated by native artists commissioned by Christian missionaries. The cross decoration blends images associated with Christ such as the crown of thorns and the holy shroud, with Central American symbols of the tree of life. The atrial cross was a common decoration in parts of the church where new native converts were introduced to Catholicism, and the decoration of the cross at Guadalupe underscores its function as a visual marriage of cultures and beliefs. What was the Silhaic movement? The Silhaic movement was a Korean style of painting that developed during the 18th century and was inspired by a newfound focus on Korean identity and Confucianism. Chong Sun 1676 to 1759 was a celebrated Korean painter and was a leading member of the Silhaic movement. He was active during the middle of the Joseon dynasty, which lasted from 1392 until 1910 and had its capital at Seoul, now the capital of South Korea. Chong Sun was inspired by Chinese literati painting and is known for his ink paintings of mountain scenes. Especially paintings of the Diamond Mountains, which he made with dark, textured brush strokes. Like the literati painters, Chong Sun was interested in capturing a true view. Or realistic depiction, of the natural world. What are decorative arts? Traditionally, decorative arts are objects that serve a function. For example, a jewelry box may be beautifully decorated with intricate metalwork. But the box itself is used as a container for jewelry. Fine art, on the other hand, serves no practical purpose and exists for purely aesthetic reasons. Painting and sculpture, for example, are considered fine arts. 
whereas decorative arts include furniture, pottery, metalwork, jewelry, and some textiles. The line between decorative art, as well as craft, and fine art is increasingly blurry. As contemporary artists and theorists are questioning the significance of function in art, What is a tympanum? A tympanum is a semicircular space often located above a door, also known as a portal. In Romanesque churches such as the Abbey Church of St. Lazare in Autun, France, this space is filled with architectural relief sculpture. Common tympanum scenes include the Last Judgment, in which Christ is represented saving blessed souls and sending the damned to hell. Who is an artist? At the risk of being facetious, an artist is a person who makes art, however. Just as the definition of art has changed over time, so have our definitions and expectations of artists. Traditionally, artists were craftsmen, or artisans. Medieval European sculptors, for example, were considered to be manual laborers. It was only after the Renaissance when cultural perceptions of artists began to change. Great masters such as Leonardo da Vinci and Diego Velázquez made a point of promoting the idea that an artist was much more than a manual laborer. They wanted to be acknowledged for their genius and special talent. The idea of artist as genius continues to this day. What is arte povera? Arte povera, meaning poor art or impoverished art is a movement that emphasized the use of everyday objects and aims to broaden just what can be considered art. The term was invented by Italian artist German Selland in 1967 and is related to similar movements such as art informal. Artists associated with Arte Pavra include Greek artist Janis Kaunelis, 1933 as well as Italians Giulio Paolini, 1940, and Michelangelo Pistoletto, 1933. Pistoletto is famous for his Arte Povera work, Venus of the Rags, 1967, in which a glimmering sculpture of Venus, the goddess of love, with her back turned to the viewer, is juxtaposed with a large, colorful pile of rags. Kaunelis also contrasts refined classicism with the everyday in his Untitled from 1978, in which fragments of a classical sculpture are held together with cord. What is the connection between Romanesque art and pilgrimages? During the 11th and 12th centuries, religious pilgrimages across Europe were extremely popular. On journeys that could last over a year, pilgrims walked along established pilgrimage routes. 
visiting important churches and religious sites. One of the most famous pilgrimage routes connected Paris with Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Nearly 1,000 miles away. Pilgrimage churches, such as St. James Cathedral in Santiago de Compostela, were specifically designed to accommodate large groups of visitors. Additional aisled transepts, ambulatories, and radiating chapels were designed to aid the flow of pilgrim traffic, as well as ensure enough space for church officials to do their work. The doors of St. James were always open for visitors exhausted after a long journey. What is magic realism? First coined in 1925 by the German art critic Franz Rowe. Magic realism flourished from the 1920s to the 1950s. Magic realism can be described as a realistic approach 228 to fantastical subject matter. Artists most associated with the style include American artists Yvonne Albright, 1897 to 1983, and Peter Bloom. 1906 to 1992, as well as French artists Paul Delvaux, 1897 to 1994, and René Magritte, 1898 to 1967, who was probably the most famous magic realist painter, but is usually categorized as a surrealist. The works of these artists are characterized by a sense of mystery juxtaposed with the normalcy of everyday objects. What is the Pantheon? Topped with the widest dome on earth until the 19th century. The Pantheon is an important example of Roman architecture, built between 125 to 128 c. E during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. The name Pantheon refers to the fact that the temple was dedicated to all of the Olympian gods, who the Romans worshipped as the Greeks had done. The Pantheon was originally built on a podium, like an Etruscan temple, but hundreds of years of development around the site now hide this. Along with the original stairs which led up the middle of the podium. The entrance portico features Corinthian columns and leads to an enormous rotunda. The walls of the rotunda are nearly 75 feet tall and 20 feet thick, which support the enormous dome. At the apex of the dome is a 30 foot oculus which means I and allows natural sunlight and sometimes rain to pour into the interior of the Pantheon. Besides the engineering innovations needed to build such a wide dome, spanning 143 feet, the Pantheon is impressive because of its harmonious proportions and beautiful decorations. If the dome were doubled, it would form a sphere that fits perfectly within the interior space of the rotunda. The interior of the dome ceiling is decorated with a rose of sunken ornamental squares that create shifting shadows as the sun moves across the sky and light filters through the oculus. Who was Henry Osawa Tanner?
Henry Osawa Tanner, 1859-1937, was the first internationally renowned African-American artist and was the most successful African-American artist of the 19th century. He studied under Thomas Aikens at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art and later moved to Paris, where he spent the majority of his career. Tanner is often considered a realist painter. For example, while the Annunciation, 1898, is a common biblical subject. Tanner includes realistic details he drew from his travels in the Middle East, such as clothing styles and interior. Decoration that visually grounds the Virgin Mary's divine encounter with the angel Gabriel. Tanner's most famous painting, The Banjo Lesson, 1893, is a quiet depiction of an elderly black man teaching a young boy to play the banjo. The painting emphasized the dignity of the scene during a time when similar scenes would have been rendered as comical or stereotypical. Like the paintings of French realists such as Millet and Courbet. Tanner's work exhibits social awareness and a sense of monumentality. Tanner's later work was predominantly religious. As the artist preferred to paint biblical subjects that reflected the struggles of 19th century African Americans. Who were the Bellini brothers? Gentile and Giovanni Bellini, members of a highly regarded family of artists, were among the most influential Venetian artists during the Renaissance. Andrea Montaigne, another famous Venetian painter, was their brother-in-law. Gentile Bellini, c. 1430-1507, received many high-status commissions from the city of Venice. Including decorative work on the Doge's palace, though most of his art has been lost. One painting that has survived is his portrait of Sultan Mehmed II, which he painted as a court painter in Constantinople. His work there highlights the ties between the two cities. Giovanni Bellini, c. 1430-1517, is slightly more famous than his brother, and is regarded by some scholars the one of the most important artists of the Venetian Renaissance. He is known for his abilities to manipulate color, space, and form and completed important Christian-themed works on a monumental scale. In 1478 he painted Virgin and Child enthroned with Saints Francis, John the Baptist, Job, Dominic, Sebastian, and Louis of Toulouse for the chapel of the Hospital of San Job. In this work, Giovanni Bellini masterfully creates the illusion of three-dimensional space as the Madonna and child sit enthroned within a vaulted apse decorated with Byzantine-inspired paintings and mosaics. Bellini is clearly a master of perspectival techniques, such as foreshortening, and creates a realistic architectural space with rich colors, and attention to detail on par with northern European masters. The golds, reds, and blues, along with the ornate decoration and use of light, reflect the aesthetic values of the Venetian Renaissance.
What is gouache? Gouache, which rhymes with squash, is a type of opaque watercolor, also known as body color. The opacity of gouache is the result of the addition of glue and white pigment. What are earthworks? Earthworks, also known as land art, are works of art made of natural materials such as earth. Rocks, water usually on an extremely large scale. Land art became popular in the 1960s. Earthworks have been linked to minimalism due to their inherent simplicity. And some scholars have called this form a reaction against consumerism because it is nearly impossible for anyone to buy or sell, or exhibit, land art. The most famous example of an earthwork is Spiral Jetty. Built on Rosal Point in the Great Salt Lake in Utah in 1970 by artist Robert Smithson. Spiral Jetty is monumental indeed a 1,500 foot long embankment made of earth. Mud, and basalt rocks that juts into the lake. Periodically submerged due to the changing levels of the lake. Earthworks such as Spiral Jetty are built on such a large scale that they evoke the mystery and largest of ancient monuments and sites such as Cahokia or Serpent Mound. Other examples of earthworks are Michael Heiser's Double Negative, 1969-70, which was created by cutting the sides of a canyon wall in the Arizona desert, as well as Walter de Maria's Lightning Field, 1977. What was the Chicago School? The Chicago School is a name given to a group of architects and designers. Working in Chicago around the turn of the century, including Daniel Burnham. 1846-1912 William L. E. Baron Jenny, 1832-1907, and Louis Sullivan, 1856-1924. One of the greatest engineering innovations associated with the Chicago School is the development of the steel-framed skyscraper. The use of iron and steel allowed engineers to build ever taller buildings usually for commercial purposes. Some of the earliest skyscrapers include the Home Insurance Building, 1884, and the 10-story Rand McNally Building, designed by Burnham and Root in 1889. 